Alrighty, today we are going to be talking about the co-host of the channel, Amberlynn Reed. If you are not familiar with what's been going on recently, I made a video talking about this, but Amberlynn Reed was recently approved to get weight loss surgery, which is something that she was super, super excited about. She was super stoked about it happening. That ended up getting derailed because the surgeon that she was working with wasn't comfortable doing the surgery because Amberlynn Reed had um, disclosed that she has been struggling with binge eating. And then the, so the surgeon said they were no longer comfortable really doing it. They said, you know, we'd have to wait about it, probably about a year. I'm kind of summarizing all this, but we'd have to wait about a year because people that are struggling with their relationship with food are really not good candidates for, for weight loss surgery, which is obviously something that a lot of people hear when they want to get weight loss surgery, because a lot of people that struggle with their relationship with food that have a very unhealthy relationship with food get to the size to where weight loss surgery might be an option for them. And it's something that a lot of people have to work on before they can get the surgery. Um, now where the issue is coming now is that Amberlynn for the longest time on her channel really used the fact that she struggled with binge eating as a way to maybe skirt some responsibility and almost use it as a, as a scapegoat of sorts, right? That's what a lot of people would say. Now it seems because it is now hindering this surgery, it seems that it is now in her best interest to try and act like she doesn't have binge eating because then she ma made videos talking about, well, actually I don't have binge eating because I talked to psychologists and they said, if you're eating three times the amount of blah, 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 right? We're on this whole thing about how maybe she actually doesn't have binge eating. And so right now we are in the era of trying to almost take away the binge eating disorder and just say, oh, I've just been overeating. And so that's what we're dealing with right now. We have two videos we're going to look at. We're going to skip through most of them, um, kind of go like about two thirds into both of these videos and kind of just I'll share my thoughts. This is the first video right here. The title of it is finally getting to meet my surgeon and new maxi dress try on vlog. Okay, you guys, so I literally just filmed this, but it was a lot of word vomit. This clip was 14 minutes long. And I have deleted it. <laughs> so I have, because I'm not uploading that. Um, I, I was crying, like there was a moment. I just don't need to be doing that. So I do have an update on um, weight loss surgery. So here's a weight loss surgery update. We, all love we love the title screens. A weight loss surgery update, don't we? So um, I'm done kind of getting into the nitty gritty. There is. Something currently happening, which I don't want to talk about um, right now. I just don't. It wouldn't do any. It wouldn't do any good <laughs> at all. But I do. I hope it's nothing like genuinely serious. Do officially have a scheduled appointment to meet with the whole team, the whole weight loss surgery team, um, and that also includes the surgeon. So I'm very excited because that'll be the first time me and the surgeon are meeting one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot happening um, behind the scenes and things that are uh, making this situation a lot harder on me, for sure. I just don't feel like um, talking about it. So we're not gonna do that. But like, let's stay positive because I officially have an appointment and I'm really excited because like, even since like the first visit at this weight loss clinic, they're just like, every patient is unique to themselves. Not everything is black and white, not everything. That's true, I agree with that. It's one size fits all. So it's like getting to sit down with the team and see like, where do we go from here? Like, as you guys know, um, you know, they wanted me to wait a whole year without binging. And it's like, l let's talk about that a little more. <laughs> what is binging? Because... <laughs> it's just funny. The difference between like videos from a few months ago when binging was a, a big thing that was brought up to, to now. It's like, well, let's talk about this. What What is that? It's like a, like when a toddler gets caught like doing something they shouldn't be. They're like, yes, okay, I understand that the cookies were mine. But let's talk about the punishment that you want to do, okay? So I know you said, like, it just, I don't know. It just sounds funny to me. You know, from the looks of it every healthcare provider that I have discussed binge eating with, you know, sees it as something different. I'm just excited to get this whole like <laughs> binge eating uh, saga over with because it has really, it's just kind of threw me for a loop. Like this whole thing and like some other stuff that I'm just like not talking about. 
So again, obviously I don't know what the other stuff is, but with the binge eating stuff, I, to an extent, I understand where she's coming from. Uh, because I, I can understand being very very frustrated I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this video that maybe have had weight loss surgery maybe had kind of similar things um, And again, it, it is true that every weight loss place is different some places really don't care that much some places again will put you on a year-long hold Some places it's three months six months, right? It's different everywhere. So I can understand being frustrated but I do think that it is good to make sure that your relationship with food is in check before you get this surgery because the surgery is incredibly invasive, one, and it changes your entire life. But the thing is, is if you're not ready for it, like you can severely hurt yourself by overeating after you get the surgery. And then less seriously, but still a bummer, is that there's a lot of people that will get the surgery, lose a lot of weight, and then gain it back almost immediately because they stretch their stomach out and then it's all almost for naught, right? It's almost pointless, right? And so obviously this place is trying to, they, I'm sure they have data of people getting the surgery and then gaining the weight back and they're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So it's clear that what this clinic is doing is probably in the best interest of Amberlynn and just people in general that are in that position, right? So I don't think that the clinic is in the wrong or anything like that, but I also do understand being frustrated with it. But I do think it's important to like, one thing that I have definitely not seen in a lot of the videos is being like taking some sort of responsibility. It just feels like completely this thing is in the way of my goal and that's not okay, right? Instead of being like, hey, yeah, I made some mistakes or whatever and let's work on that. I don't know. I just, I'm, a, I'm stressing out. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> some of you have noticed it. They're like, your vlogs, do you feel kind of distant from us and i've had a few people message me and tell me that and it's like i don't mean to be i just have like my own set of like personal things happening right now that i just don't really there's a time and a place and i just don't think it's the time and i don't think it's the place like that 14 minute clip that i just filmed i went rambling about how like i i do feel a disconnect um i'm trying so hard to just be the most vulnerable I can be and I'm just not coming off that way and it makes me sad um I do feel like I have put up a lot of walls um because it's like there's only so much one person can take regardless of how strong you are I don't really want to get into that though um I don't I don't so yeah, I've been trying to upload every other day for you guys, which I'm stuff like this is just kind of cryptic. Like I, I don't really have much to say because it, it it's it seems like it's talking about something that she's not comfortable with sharing. And so I have literally no idea what the thing is. It could be something huge, it could be something that's not that big of a deal. So I don't know, I'm just not really comfortable kind of commenting on that. I've been successful with and my videos got kind of behind and I was like vlogging every day for a minute there. I was like vloggy vlog vlog um but in the last week i have slowed down a little bit and that's why there is multiple days in this vlog but i think for my sanity i like to be um ahead and even feline considers it ahead a lot of people are like oh my god she's behind on videos she's so lazy no when i'm behind on videos behind on videos that means i'm just doing my job i understand this uh i <laughs> I, I see where she's coming from, right? Because she's recording so much, she is behind, right? So the videos are from four days ago that you're uploading this day. I Again, for me, I've just never understood the want to film yourself every day. Like, I just recently posted a full day of eating, right? And the comments are, they're nice and stuff, but, like, people are like, oh, I can guess what this food is because I, my day is the same stuff every single day. And, like, um, I don't watch every single one of Amberlynn's videos, but the ones that I've watched, it's just, like, I don't, I just couldn't imagine wanting to film myself doing what I do every day. Like I'm happy doing what I do every day, but the thought of me filming myself doing what I do every day is just like, I, I couldn't imagine more boring content for me, myself personally. Like I would never want to watch that. And so it, it feels like it's one of those things where it's like, it seems like she likes the thought of filming every day because it's something that she can say that she's doing, right? Because then it seems like she's busy and she's working hard. That's what it, that's the, the vibe I get off of it at least. That means I am filming a lot and I'm uploading every other day. 
and uploading every other day is like what works good for me when it comes to views, viewership, how often I want content on YouTube. I don't like to overpower. I don't like the daily thing unless it's Vlogmas because that is like something that like almost every single YouTuber does. But yeah, I just, I want to stay, you know, a little ahead of the ball game here because like when I do get weight loss surgery, whenever that may be, because I don't know if the whole year thing has changed. I don't know. So I get to meet with everyone and figure that out. So I want to make it clear that I, <sighs> there might be people that disagree with me here, but like I, I genuinely hope that Amberlynn does get the surgery. Um, I don't know when that will happen. And I do hope that it seems like w right now where she's at, it doesn't seem like she is, uh, taking it seriously. And I, I think I can understand, like if I it was, out, if I was to try and give out an olive branch to her, right. I would say I can understand because you were very excited and then you were told you're going to have to wait a year and that is going to be very distressing and it's going to be hard to deal with. But I do think that there needs to be a little bit more gusto and like belief in yourself that you can make a change without this surgery, right? Like I, I really do believe that that's important to have, like believe in yourself before thinking the surgery is going to be some magic bullet because the surgery isn't that. And um, there's plenty of people in her comments that are saying that. And I, I can't imagine that she doesn't at least believe that in the back of her head. And so again, I want Amberlynn to get this surgery, to get a, some sort of weight loss surgery, because I do think that she is someone that is a very good candidate for it as far as like her weight and her size. I don't think that right now mentally and the way that she is carrying herself as far as the way that she's eating and the mentality that she has, I don't know if it's the best thing to happen right now, which it seems like her doctors agree. And so I just want to make it clear. I'm not someone sit sitting here saying like, she'll never get the surgery. She shouldn't ever get it. No, 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 no. I think she should. And I do think it'll be something that's very, 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 very helpful for her. Um, if she takes the steps that are necessary to get the surgery. Oh, and I'm very excited for that. It's like when I do get weight loss surgery, like I'm not going to want to film. I'm not going to want to do my job. <laughs> Obviously when you get surgery, you get to not work. Thankfully, um, nine times out of 10 you don't have to work. And I remember when I got my hysterectomy, um, I barely uploaded. I had a few pre-recorded things from months prior, but I didn't really film much. And I do want to document my whole weight loss journey. You guys know that, you guys see that, you guys feel that, you get it. Like, I don't care how behind or how ahead or how this, how that. As long as you guys are getting a video every other day, I am totally fine with that. Because no matter what, if I'm a week ahead, a week behind, two weeks behind, two weeks ahead, however you want to word it, you guys are going to be seeing it regardless. So really quickly, let's do Instagram Q&A. So that means it is question of the day time. So this question is, how many times a week do you leave the house? which love this question. I actually got it a few times this go around, which I can see why, because I literally do not film outside of the house, but I leave the house daily if it comes to like walking Twinkie, sitting outside on my porch, cause love to do that. I mean, it's been pretty frigid lately, so I haven't been doing that. I'm not gonna sit out there all bundled up and shivering. But when it comes to like getting in the car and going somewhere, I'd say about five times. Um, I just don't film. Like I said, there is a disconnect. With me. I, therapy, I, I don't know. I, with stuff like this, like she could be telling the truth, she could be lying. I don't freaking know. I really don't. And honestly, at the end of the day, I don't care <laughs> about stuff like this, right? Um, I can say that I, I do understand the feeling of like the anxiety and like something that a lot of people ask me is like, why don't you film more in the gym? Why don't you have more clips of you in the gym? I go to the gym every day, right? Literally, I go to the gym what, a week, every day, right? Every single day. And I almost never, ever film myself. I might take a selfie afterwards because I don't want to. I don't want to film myself in the gym. I don't want any more attention on me than, than is necessary. Uh, it's just not something that I like doing. And so, I mean, it would be, yeah, if people were like, I don't believe that you go to the gym. I'd be like, well, I mean, I do, but I'm not going to film myself just to prove it to you. And so, again, she could be lying. She could be telling the truth. I don't know. And at the end of the day, I really don't care. But I can understand um, – I can understand the person that's asking a question, but I can also understand being annoyed with the question. Me and YouTube, and I get a little anxious when I think of YouTube. And when I'm leaving the house, I don't want to be anxious. I want to be 
enjoying my time, regardless of what I'm doing. So anyways, um, I'm going to try to get better with that. I have to. Um, sometimes mental health comes first and sometimes we got to put it on the back burner, but I mean, I don't know if you really don't want to do it. I don't think you have to, but that's just my opinion. Um, and then this next video, this was just uploaded today as of recording this video, um, explaining my diet, starting therapy and exercising scares me. And so this is a little bit longer of a clip, um, but let's just get into it. Okay, you guys. So I actually had a few people ask me if I've been exercising, moving more, etc. Yes, I have, but I obviously do not talk about everything in my life. <laughs> a lot of people assume if I'm not showing something that I'm not doing. I mean, <laughs> you talk about a lot. You talk about a lot and very, I think the reason that people have these like misconceptions or maybe they don't believe you is because a lot of times you will talk about stuff that is so minuscule and just not important and just so like out there that in my mind the thought of you not talking about exercise when you claim you exercise a lot and like you 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 want to prove to people it's very clear that you really want to prove to people that you're serious about losing weight and that you're serious about it this time whatever time that is like it, it just seems very far-fetched to me to not record yourself working out or even like not even talk about it right uh, you don't have to record yourself working out i can understand maybe you just don't want people to see that i get it but to not even like talk about the methods that you're using or the things that you're doing at all but you talk about like the diet and stuff like that all the time i don't know again i'm not even saying that you need to be doing like these types of workouts or anything like that but it's just like very strange to me that you wouldn't talk about this because it's so clear in a lot of your videos that you really try to prove it to people that you're doing xyz right doing something not how it works so what i do is i write down what i'm gonna do how many times am i gonna do it on a piece of paper i like things that are more obtainable that i can physically see mark off um so what i do is i do each of these things three times and then i write how many reps that I did. My goal is to always do the same or more than I did the day before. So I stretch, I walk in place, I do warm ups, crunches, leg kicks, punches, and high knees. I do all of these things three times for as long as I can, or what feels not comfortable because you don't want to be comfortable when you're working out. That's not exactly the right word for it but until you just can't do it anymore without like hurting yourself obviously so i'm gonna go do those i mean this is yeah i mean it's really hard when someone is the size of Amberlynn when we're talking about like working out because it can be it genuinely can be dangerous right like falling over stuff like that so i think that this sounds fine it, it, at the end of the day like for me um this is much 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 less important than the diet right when you're if we're talking about just strictly weight loss I, I do think moving your body as far as just maintaining your mobility right because when you're getting larger and larger you get closer and closer to being bedridden like not being able to walk like Amberlynn has talked about when she hurt her ankle I think it was um how about how terrified she was of becoming bedridden um it's very it's it's one of those things that it's, you're very very close to that happening and so it's important to be moving your body in some way so that doesn't happen right or stave that off as long as you possibly can um and so I think like when you're at this size the working out isn't really about like burning a ton of calories or anything like that right because i just don't think it, that's the the intent right it should be about making sure that you're able to move your body in any way um so yeah no this is not a workout with me <laughs> i'm gonna do it um alone like i have been doing it but i kind of just wanted to introduce it to you guys that yes i do have a little exercise routine that i do and then i just put it in a folder and I will do the same thing tomorrow. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. I mean, that handwriting is a lot better than mine does. My handwriting is literally, you can't even read it. Super simple and this is just easiest for me because I like visual, visualizing, you know. And I think that's the reason why I really like reading books. Some people have been telling me to get a Kindle, which I do have a Kindle, but it just doesn't feel the same. I like physical. <laughs> she said Kendall and then Kindle. It's just, I don't know. It's something I noticed. 
in my hands. That is why I like pen to paper. Not everything has to be technology based. Alrighty, so. Thank you. I was, I was curious about that. <laughs> Here it is. Here is how I did. W stand for whole and S is stand for separate. So whole just simply means instead of counting one rep as one punch, it just means it, one rep is like both your arms. Um, same with like the leg kicks, but I do high knees separate. So that's just what that means, but yeah. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to, okay, got a little fuzz. Uh, one of the main reasons why I wanted to talk about like my exercising today is because I wanted to talk a little bit about like, I get anxiety exercising. I get really bad anxiety, sometimes like verge of panic attack. And that's scary for me. And I know what is causing it, but I don't know how to stop that anxiety feeling. So what is causing it is rapid, like heart, uh, just your heart beating quicker than usual. Um, it's not beating above beyond what it should be. It's at a really good rate when I exercise, but I correlate my heart beating really, really fast with anxiety and vice versa. Um, anxiety makes me have a really fast heart rate, but then me having a really fast heart rate gives me anxiety. So it's like, I completely understand this. Uh, it's definitely like, if you've never been really, really heavy, I think it might be hard to like relate to. And I'm, I'm not even sure if it's only a heavy person thing, but when I was at my heaviest and like the thought of working out was scary. Right. And like the thought of like enjoying the gym, I was just like, yeah, okay, sure. Right. But so I understand this. I think the the only way to push through it is to just literally push through it, like just work on it and understand that like if you are working out, your heart rate is going to be higher. That's OK. Right. It's OK in that moment. Um, but I mean, I, I understand this fear. I understand this fear. This like vicious cycle. Obviously, that anxiety is not stopping me from exercising. But it just doesn't take away that feeling. I actually hate it. And I don't feel like it's irrational because obviously someone my size like your heart beating fast is a scary feeling because being the size your heart has to work more than the average that's an obvious thing so i wouldn't say it's really irrational so usually if something irrationally gives me anxiety obviously still hard to overcome but it's more so like i'm able to be like practical and rational and be like girl come on now but with something that isn't irrational like i feel like this is actually pretty rational that I get anxiety from that, I think that's what scares me more because it's like, okay, so you have a reason. So is that reason true? Is your heart really okay? Is it about to combust? It is what it is, but it's not stopping me from exercising. Everything that I am doing is totally fine. Um, it's nothing. Stuff like this, man, this is, I mean, I, I don't disagree with what's being said here. I can understand this fear and this is why I'm like, I get so frustrated when people are like oh yeah b being overweight has nothing to do with your health and blah i'm just like come on dude give me a break man like again i mean hold your thoughts of however you feel, might feel about amberlyn reed but like someone being this size being afraid of working out that's a problem right like that's one true and that's that's terrible that's terrible it's terrible to be literally be afraid of doing the thing that would help you no longer be in this position right exercising because you are you know are overweight being afraid of that because you're overweight like that is it's terrible it's terrible it's a terrible position to be in thing too extreme obviously i'm not gonna like overdo it although there are times where i'm like damn like ouch but um that's just like if i'm using my muscles more than i normally would so i just feel like i'm rambling but really that's the reason why i wanted to introduce like, yeah, I do exercise and yeah, this is what I do, but this is why I don't really talk about it because it doesn't bring me joy like it would other people. Um, everyone always says exercise lets off certain, you know, endorphins. It makes you feel good. Not me. <laughs> nope. So I just don't want to like persuade anyone into like not exercising or like whatever, like, cause exercising is really good for you, but I just get anxiety exercising. So I do. I don't think 
So it's like stuff like that. It's like I don't think that people are going to be dissuaded from exercising because you're talking about how it's scary for you. Again, I'm not saying that you don't feel that way, but it just like sometimes the explanations. I'm like, I I just don't I don't think that people are that's gonna happen. And so you just need to. I think if you want to talk about it, talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, don't talk about it. I do have a little bit of updates when it comes to weight loss surgery. I Let's do, do have it. more. So welcome to weight loss surgery update. All right. I get really excited doing these updates because every update just means I'm a step closer and it's just really exciting. So Let's the go. psychologist who actually approved me originally okay. um, for surgery, mm -hmm. I have been emailing with him. There are some things that I do not want to talk about right now, okay. which I will talk about eventually. Right. But right now, I just feel like to protect myself, mm. my mental and my privacy, I am not going to get into it. Okay. But I will say... There have been some developments. Oh. Um, I do have my appointment with my team, including the surgeon, coming up, and I'm so excited. I think things might be different. I don't really know. Okay. But as of right now, they want me to do 12 sessions with a therapist. All right. I can do two sessions a week. I can do one session every two weeks. So obviously, the quicker I do it, um, the better. But it's not just up to up to me you know um yeah i actually officially have a new psychologist and i'm really excited i asked the psychologist who originally approved me for weight loss surgery i'm sorry this is gonna get confusing because there's a lot of professionals and i try to give you guys what i can um i ended up asking him i was like you know do you recommend any therapists or psychologists anyone good anyone that you feel like would be a good fit with me and he actually sent over six and I chose one, I called, and I made an appointment. So my appointment for that is also coming up and that'll be my first session. So depending on how this session goes, is going to be a deciding factor for me if I wanna do two a week or if I wanna do just one a week or how I wanna do it. Um, obviously I feel like I don't wanna be too extreme and do it twice a week, but we'll see. I definitely don't want to do it every other week because obviously I want the weight loss surgery like sooner the better. But I can either get this done in a month and a half or three months. And to me, either one of those options is actually really good. But there is something else I want to mention because people are asking like why. I mean, I think that seeing a therapist is always good. I don't, know. I don't really have much to say about that. Why don't you show your food, like what you're eating? And you guys heard me be a little snarky, snarky <laughs> over there when I was um, showing you what I had for lunch today. And it's because people judge. It's like so harsh. And it's like, this is a moment for- People do judge, I mean, 100%. Whenever I do full day of eatings, now it's not as much because one, I don't do them often. And I make it clear like, yo bro, my diet sucks. Like I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can understand that to an extent, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll have more to say about it. For me, where I just feel like the judgment is like, it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong, even though I know what I'm doing is right. People are expecting me to be on the pre-op diet. I'm not on the pre-op diet. I'm not approved for weight loss surgery, so I'm not on the pre-op diet. People are getting really confused with that, and I think- Okay, so what I think, <laughs> I, I sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of like almost gaslighting going on because I, I, I doubt that it's people actually saying you should be on the pre-op diet this entire time until you actually get the surgery in maybe a year. I, if people are saying that, they're stupid, all right? I'll, I'll say that. I'm assuming most people are like, hey, uh, if you want to get weight loss surgery, you need to show that you are interested in changing yourself. And so if the things that you are eating are very similar to what you have been eating in the past, that's going to show your followers. And then on top of it, right? It's gonna show them that you're not serious. But then on top of that, your history and past with starting a diet, stopping a diet, starting a diet, stopping a diet, obviously is going to go into those people's perceptions of the food that you are eating. And so I don't think that it's people saying you need to be on the pre-op diet for an entire year. I'm sure it's people more so saying, hey, if you wanna get weight loss surgery, you can't just like do whatever you want and then just, oh, I'm gonna get the surgery, cool. 
It's like, even if you're considering the surgery and you're not approved yet, you haven't even talked to a doctor, right? It makes sense to be like, okay, I want to get weight loss surgery, but it doesn't make sense to be like, I want to get weight loss surgery, uh, but I'm going to have McDonald's every night until I actually get the weight loss surgery. Like that just doesn't make any sense. I'm not saying that you're getting McDonald's every night, but just like not changing your diet at all doesn't make sense. I think that's becoming like frustrating to me because it's like people are expecting me to like be eating like the tiniest amount of food ever. And I'm just like, no, that's not what this is. That's not the plan they have me on. That's not what my dietitian wants for me. That my dietitian tells me if I'm doing something wrong, if I'm doing something right, what she wants me to do. And having two eggs and two servings of spam is okay. And I'm talking about when I had eggs and spam, but I'm having some spam and some eggs. So that's what I'm having. People were like coming for me. And I'm like, this is two eggs, which I'm allowed to have. It's two eggs. But people were saying how it looks like it's five eggs. I'm like, I couldn't even stomach five eggs. <laughs> like, I, If you guys know, I have egg intolerance. Um, comes and goes, it's gotten a lot better. Um, in the last <laughs> the way that she explained that it sounded like she knew how ridiculous she sounded and then tried to explain it away you couldn't stomach five eggs come on i'm not i'm not trying to be mean but come on dude come on i'm not saying that you were eating five eggs but like it's stuff like this like why even put this in the video especially when it sounds like you don't are like oh wait wait a second i know that sounded really ridiculous let me try and make it make sense like last few years thank god so eating two scrambled eggs is fine. And like recently, like I showed you guys like this quinoa um, ground turkey situation type deal that I absolutely loved. Calorie wise, it's 408 calories. What this is, is we have broccoli. We have a serving of guac, quinoa, onion, and ground turkey and pico de gallo. And I have all the calories and I told you guys the calories and I have the calories because I physically had the nutrition packet right in front of me. And there was people with the audacity to say, no, that's like 900 calories. Like one serving of ground turkey is like 250 calories. And I'm like, I have the physical nutrition packet right in front of me. Like I know how to count calories. I'm just an idiot who doesn't do it. <laughs> she said it, she said it. Like, that is why I need help because I didn't do the right things and I never do the right things for long term. And that's why weight loss surgery is there is to help people like me. But it's just exhausting. It's so exhausting to like, literally, I feel like I am talking. So I I don't disagree, but the, the thing that you are doing is continuing to make the same exact types of videos, right? And so I don't even disagree that it's not exhausting. It would be exhausting to me if I, every time I uploaded a full day of eating, people said that to me and people were. And so what did I do? I stopped doing full day of eatings because I was like, I don't, I'm not gonna, I, why would I put myself in that position, right? Like if every time I posted, I don't know, like on my Instagram, a picture of my loose skin and people were super mean about it, right? I just wouldn't post those pictures all the time, right? Or I would and just be like, you know, it is what it is. It just, it's like you continue to make the same mistakes and do the same thing over and over and over again. And then you get upset with the people that are continuing to watch your videos that are pointing out these mistakes that you're making and you're like getting upset with them for it. It's just like, if you don't want to deal with the backlash of it, just you don't have to put it up, right? You don't have to share it. It's your choice to share it and you're choosing to share this, t this thing a lot. Right. And so into a wall, obviously I don't mean that towards everyone who's watching me. I'm talking about the people who are just so reluctant on finding me in a lie or seeing if I'm like eating the wrong foods or the right foods or all this stuff. And I'm just like, what? Like, that's just, it's just crazy. It's just the way I see it is like, if, if those people want to watch, because I, I'm, I don't disagree that there are people that watch Amberlynn that are way too into it, that get into every single little minutia, detailed, tiny thing and try and prove this wrong or this right or whatever. It's like, let those people watch. You don't have to respond to them in every single video and try and like side eye them or try and find a way to mention them, but not really mention them or get like, you don't have to. 
you can just let them watch the videos, get that ad revenue, and just do your thing, right? I just don't know why you constantly try to prove to these people, that, and I wanna make it clear, there are absolutely those people that watch your videos that nothing you do or say is going to make them feel a, a different way, right? But there are people that are watching your videos that I do believe that you could make them b believe you or that are not just there to tear you down, right? There are certainly those people, but I don't think that's everybody. And so why not make videos for them instead of making the videos trying to prove to those people that you know, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're not gonna believe you. It's like, focus on you. Honestly, focus on you. Like, stop comparing. Every program for weight loss surgery is different. And I've learned that the hard way, but I've also learned that the good way. Is that a, is that a, is that a saying? Probably not. Because I feel like what is happening for me is happening for a reason. And it's just like, worry about you. Worry about what you're eating. You know, I don't show what I'm eating for judgment and advice. No, I don't. I, I don't need it. I have professionals for that now. And people are constantly saying, follow professionals. I am. <laughs> that is why I'm here. That is what I'm doing. And I'm not on the pre-op diet. I think that's what people are getting super confused with. I'm... I don't think people are confused with that, in my opinion. If they are, those people are very stupid. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be just eating these tiny, tiny portions. That's not what they told me to do. Just, it, honestly, my lack of being transparent with what I'm eating is simply because I don't feel comfortable at all. And I don't feel safe in that, so... I'm just, you know, gonna show when I want, when I don't want. Um, it's gonna be rare. Like, I would love to come on here and show you guys more of what I'm making, what I'm eating, what I'm doing. Uh, it's just, I don't feel comfortable. And I'm only gonna share what I'm comfortable sharing. That doesn't mean I'm off track. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm gaining weight because I'm not telling you guys my weight. I'm not telling you guys my weight because I do better when I don't do weigh-ins. Like every single time I've lost a large chunk of weight, it's because I did not talk about my weigh-ins. Um, when I lost 106 pounds, it's because I stopped doing weigh-ins. I stopped talking about my weight. Everyone thought I gained weight. And I came on here and I said, mm, nope, <laughs> here's your proof. Um, and that's happened a couple of other times. And it's just like, I do. I mean, on the same token though, every time you've gained a significant amount of weight, you haven't <laughs> shared that either, right? And so it's like, again, it, I just, I don't understand why you spend so much time trying to like do these gotchas because I just don't think it's worth your time. I just don't think it, it does anything, anything good in my opinion. Do better when I don't have to like prove myself to people. At least that's and imagine how good you would do if you didn't feel like you needed to film yourself every single day and like prove to these, you know, that that's the, that's the argument that could be made. Like if you want to do it, then do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't need to make a video about why you're not doing it, right? In my opinion. It's not why I'm here. I'm not here to prove myself to anybody. I feel like the people who get angry and annoyed that I'm not showing my food or my weight or whatever it may be is only because people want to pick apart those things. It's not because they actually care. They just want to pick apart what I'm doing. And I don't want that. I'm not in that type of like headspace. So I'm not going to give that. And if that means... People are going to be angry with me, whatever, because people are angry with me regardless. It's like, I can never win. I can never do right. And that's just like how it's always going to be, I feel like. So at the end of the day, when it comes to this weight loss surgery, like I said earlier, I do hope that Amberlynn ends up getting it. I do think that it's important to work on some things before that happens. Um, I don't know if that's going to take a year. I don't know if it's going to take a few weeks or months, probably not a few weeks, but um, I think that I do think that the weight loss surgery is something that could help, uh, could help. It's not the end all be all. I, I get frustrated whenever I watch these videos because it's so much trying to prove to certain people that I'm doing this and that and not doing this and that. And it's just, it just feels like such a waste. You know, if you want to do this, then do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it at the end of the day. That's the way I see it. Um, but again, those are just my thoughts. Those are my opinions. I would love to know what you think down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.